Um, <clears throat> this episode is going to be a little bit more geared towards uh, like an informative disposition. Hang on. Is my little beepy beepy still on? It's on. Okay. Just a little background. By day, I do this fitnessy sort of thing in the mornings. I train people five days a week. I got a few certifications for it, blah, 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 blah. I, for the longest time, have wanted to make a video which goes into um, how to help protect your knees, how to protect your hips, and really how to get the most longevity out of riding. This actually segues into a lot of people having some comments about um, the suspension on the adventure. They don't really see a whole lot of activation in terms of the suspension on the adventure. And there's a couple crucial reasons why. The human body has a few hinges. For our purposes, um, in taking ground absorption, transferring that to the upper body, we're gonna call that four hinges, okay? We're gonna say we have a hip hinge. We're gonna say that we have a knee hinge. We're gonna say that we have a ankle hinge. And then we're gonna say that we have a toe hinge, okay? The hip hinge, that's responsible for this. Okay, that's the traction of the hinge. That's, that's the direction that that hinge wants to move. The knee hinge is responsible for, can you guess? Do it with me for this right here, okay? That's what it does. All right. And then the ankle, can you guess, right? This here, that nice extension and that retraction, that extension and that retraction. And then the, the little toe right here. That's so that way I can push my tootsies down and I can lift my tootsies up. And I can push my tootsies down and I can lift my tootsies up. That's what that does, okay? The muscles on the backside here that help you with this process okay, with facilitating what the hinge does, okay, that, oh, and I missed it almost. There's a fancy name for it, but we're just going to call our fancier names, rectus abdominal, you know, external obliques, transverse abdominal, but for our purposes, we're just going to call this your abs, okay? So the things that are responsible for your hip hinge are going to be your abs and then your lower back. This is concentric, okay? So abs, are doing eccentric loading, the lower back and the glutes here are doing a concentric load, okay? So lower back, glutes, abs. And then at the knee, at the knee, we have our hamstring, which is facilitating this, this part, pulling back here. And then our quads are facilitating that nice big extension. So the hamstrings are facilitating this pullback, and then the quads are facilitating that extension. The gastrocnemius, I don't even know how to spell that thing, okay? That thing is responsible for you pressing down. So whenever you push down on the gas, that's your gastrocnemius, your gastrocnemius. And then when you pull up, that's your tibialis, your anterior tibialis, okay? And then the thing that's responsible for this right here on your feet, that's just called your dorsal enterose. So this, boop, 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 dorsal enterose, okay? This right here is just a person standing up, okay? This is just a person standing up, doing nothing else. This is just chilling out, standing. This is just a normal person. Okay. <laughs> no engagement of body or anything like that. Um, let's look at our two riding postures. These are our two potential riding postures here. This is a more chooch um, method methodology. And this is what I see a lot of people doing. This is easier to do uh, in the short term. This is uh, this takes very little calories. Okay. This costs little on the muscles, this particular form. This, however, on the muscles, on all these muscles we just talked about, is this is very expensive on those muscles. You're going to feel like you did some work if you stay here. You're not going to feel like you did much work if you, if you were here. Um, so it's going to feel more leisurely, um, but you may end up with some aches and pains as evidenced by the picture here. So the human body, we, <laughs> we often, uh, I see riders, EUC riders, treating the body like this sort of fast A suspension with an up and down travel. So you often see this sort of you know, this kind of up and down sort of this thing here, which involves a lot of compression. It involves compression here at the knee. It involves compression here through the heel. So you're not really getting um, a lot of shock absorption um, outside of anything that your wheel provides you and then your joints are providing you. Um, additionally, what happens here is that we have this unintended consequence of a hinge here because you've got some weight up here in your shoulders and in your head. And when you hit a bump, your body's going to try to go through the path of least resistance. So this subtle arch in the back, this subtle curve will turn into a compression. And then you'll have some bad stuff happen in your lower lumbar there. 
This is an example of a big no-no. This is not what you want to do at all. Let's look at further damage that can be happening as a result of this here, okay? So further damage with this thing we've got um, right here at the knee, okay? Because we don't have any of the shock systems engaged that we, that we could potentially have utilizing our muscles, I'm going to talk about that. Because we don't have any of these things engaged here, what we have is effectively all of this weight right here, the head, shoulders, knees, and tips. No, the head, shoulders, torso, the hip, the thighs. All of this weight is now just boom with each... Each, um, with each bump, with each um, imperfection in the road, just boom, this weight down through your knees, through the front here, through the, the femur, through the tibia, just, or sorry, through the patella, just boom, boom, boom. And you don't have a lot of support to come back from that. There's nothing here that, that makes it expand back upwards this way uh, without any bending. So it's just a lot of bone on bone sort of action and then grinding and kind of misaligning that could potentially happen. And so this is why you'll have a lot of aches and pains in your knees as well. Let's go up top and look at our wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Um, and I say that because this is how you want to ride. Okay. Um, this is where you want to be in order to minimize your pains. It's going to be a little bit harder to do, but, oh, but this is, this is, um, this is more of a linkage style. If you look at the human body and you look at kind of how it's made up, you'll see that we have more of this linkage style design, right? So let's explore what this linkage style design is made up of. Um, okay. So right here, this, uh, eccentric load is handled by the abs, right? And then this rebound, so this is your compression, okay? So your compression here is handled by your abs. Your rebound is handled by your lower back and your glutes, okay? The compression here in this little uh, hinge is handled by your uh, hamstring. And then the uh, rebound uh, is then handled by the quadriceps there, okay? So that, that extension, that extension, that rebound is handled by the quadriceps at the knee. Okay, and then right here on the, uh, uh, in, in the ankle portion here, um, the eccentric load is handled by the anterior tibialis right here. So that's handled here. And then the concentric load is handled by the gastrocnemius here. So that gives you press that gas, right? Um, and then going down here, okay, so it's controlled by the same muscle, the dorsal, the dorsal anteriosi. So right here, this, this motion uh, right in there. Okay, so rebound and compression is handled right in there. So if, if you want to see a suspension work when I'm riding it, it's going to have to pass through every single one of these suspension systems before it gets down to the ground. I don't let the wheel use its suspension unless I want it to. I am very, very funny about that and about my application of pressure to the ground. I find that this is paramount and super duper important, especially when you're riding off-road and the terrain can be a little bit shaky. Sometimes you have firm ground. Sometimes you have loose ground. Sometimes you have dry ground. Sometimes you have wet ground. And I find that if you apply the same amount of pressure the whole time, and you don't adjust these mechanics for what's potentially ahead of you, uh, dynamically adjusting your body's rebound and compression as you move, what's going to end up happening is you'll end up over torquing, you'll lose traction, you won't be able to accelerate or handle as good as you thought that you possibly could. So that said, let's look at a couple of ways to strengthen these hinges and to strengthen these muscles, okay? What's up guys? So. Um, just following up on the video that we're just inside. Um, now outside, we're going to do some exercises. We got four different exercises that we're going to do that are going to greatly increase your quality of life, that are going to decrease the amount of pain that you experience in your knees and in your lower back. Hopefully level up your riding game and make you feel a little bit more confident. So uh, let's go ahead and get to the first one. Um, you've heard of calf raises maybe. If you haven't, I'm just going to demonstrate them loosely. So get something to balance on. You can use a wall or you can use a prop like this chair. Then we're going to take and lift up one foot and we're just going to press through as the, the name in, implies and one foot all the way up and down and up and down. And we're going to do that 10 times per side, trying to limit the amount of bouncing that we do because we want to uh, get the most that we can out of the exercise. So nice and slow. Okay. So calf raises. If that's too difficult to do with one foot at a time, then you can do two feet at a time. Okay. 
So that way we get that nice strength down into those uh, into those chaos, into the gastrocnemius and the tibialis. Okay. And then next, we have to look at getting some uh, support for the knee, right? We already found some support for the ankle. Okay. So we got to get some support for the knee. And that support's going to come largely through our quads, right? And through our hamstrings. Okay. Uh, so what we're going to do now is this fun exercise that I call the down dog leg extension. I've got a couple of props. These things will help you. They're not absolutely essential, okay? But you will get so much more if you just buy one of these little band sets, okay? It's a resistance band set on Amazon, all right? <clears throat> and you don't even need this if you do that because you can just tie a knot in one of these and that works. So we're going to do what I call a down dog leg extension. If you want to, uh, look on YouTube for the form for a downward facing dog. And that's essentially what we're looking for. And then we're going to hook this band back behind the knees and get this band into your hands like this here. Okay, so that way you can make a flat palm on the ground without having to worry about the band jumping out and slipping on you. Okay, so I'm going to go right here. Get a nice little all fours position here. And then we're going to go up into our down dog, okay? So we've got this little tabletop or all fours position. And we're going to go up into our down dog. And what we've done here is we're now lengthening our hamstrings at the same time that we're engaging our quads. Okay, so we're going to do that just a little bit more. So we're going to go here and back up, here and back up. And you'll notice that I'm keeping a straight line between my shoulders and my upper body. Okay? And what this is going to do is it's really, really, really going to work those quadriceps and strengthen that joint and lengthen those hamstrings, okay, to make it a little bit easier for you to handle that, that compression back here, okay? The next exercise that we're going to look at is a squat. For that, I'm going to use a band like this, or I'm just going to grab one of these guys, and I can just make a knot here. I'm all about saving money, cutting corners if you can where you need to okay and then we're just going to put this around our legs just like that we're going to spread our legs just a little bit wider than shoulder width apart okay and then i'm going to turn to the side so you can kind of see what this looks like getting our hands out parallel to the ground we're now going to pitch at the waist bending at the waist bending at the waist until our chest is almost parallel with the ground then we're bending our knees and we're coming down here into this nice little squat. And we're going to do the same thing coming up, 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 back down. Just as deep as you can go. If your chest only gets to the band, that's perfectly okay. But you'll notice that my knees here are pretty well in line with my toes. They're not in front of them. They're not behind them too much. But it's a nice center of gravity, okay? So you're going to want to do 10 calf raises, 10 of the down dog leg extensions. And then 10 squats, just like that, to strengthen that this hinge right here, right? So in order to strengthen that hinge, we're going to get onto our back, and uh, we're going to get some bonus points on our neck hinge as well, okay? So we're going to get our feet right at shoulder width apart, right at shoulder width apart here, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to press down into the ground with our palms. And as we do so, we're going to go ahead and lift up our bottom as we pick up our chin and look at our knees. Down and up. Down and up. Conditioning not only the intended glutes, hamstrings, and supporting that eccentric with the core, not only getting that motion, but when you lift the chin, you're working that bonus hinge up here in the neck, that sternocleidomastoid for all of that jiggling stuff that the helmets do. And when you got your chin out there and you're looking around the trail and stuff, so you get that nice extra little bonus point up here. So just to recap, you're going to be doing your calf raises. We're going to be doing those down dog leg extensions. We're going to be doing our squats. Um, and then we're going to be doing our hip thrusts. Okay. Those four, perfect. Your life will be so much better. And... Let's look at the, uh, the form, okay? So these, uh, this form here is what, I, is what I often see, okay? I see this kind of 
this lower back kind of just here. And this is what I see people riding like. And the, the force happens here, right here into the knees. So this over and over into your knees is really, really bad on them. It's kind of like running downhill. It's, it's no fun. It's more hard work to run uphill, uh, but uh, you find that it's much less pain on the joint. So that's kind of the analogy that I also want you to think about. I want you to try to over-engage when you're on an EUC in order to protect those joints, okay? So now let's look at the form that I really like to use myself. So the first hinge for me happens at the waist, and then I drop down into the knees. And then occasionally I get up onto my haunches. So now I've got this wonderful hinge right here. I've got this wonderful hinge right here, this wonderful hinge right here, and this wonderful hinge right here. So everything that my body is getting, it goes like this. So it's perpetually like this. So, you know, there is, that is all of how uh, my body takes in the uh, feel of everything and then dictates the amount of poundage and pressure that I put down. Okay. Uh, so when you don't see the adventure suspension engaging that much, it's very simply because I do not require that. I do not request that. I save the suspension for the things that I cannot accommodate for, okay, which is very little. And then I, I also use it for uh, intense bounding, for like nice sending, for big jumping off of incidental routes and things like that. So um, that's why. So the difference between here, which is where you don't want to be, and then here, which is where you want to be. And you can see if you draw a line straight up and down through my body, how all of these hinges are now working together to provide relief to the joints. Whereas here, there's nothing but compression and rigid impact. And that's not what we want at all, okay? All right, turn your body into a living suspension. Make sure that you keep yourself safe, ride safe. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll talk soon. And a big shout out to my sponsors, E-Wheels, In Motion, uh, Lazy Rolling, Naps happen, uh, the fringe by Parish, uh, e-rides, just so much love from so many people. Uh, just you guys are amazing. All right. So till next time, we'll we'll see you later.